Welcome back. Welcome back to the 14 day practice challenge. Today our focus is left hand placement. Intonation is everything when we're playing. It's what helps guide our melody. If we play out of tune, it sounds, it does, it won't uh, create the melody line that you're anticipating hearing. So if you said to your friend, I'm going to play you Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but you don't precisely place your fingers exactly on our invisible fretless board, um, it's not going to come across sounding like Twinkle Twinkle to them. So they'll be so excited waiting to hear Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and they might get a variation of So the shape is the same, but that's not the twinkle I recognize. So today's focus is left hand placement. And there's three things, three key concepts I want you to keep in mind. The first is what I call the lobster pincher. When you look at a lobster pincher, generally the claws come together, but you can actually see light through the claw. It's not squeezed completely tight shut. Now you might argue with me if you get your thumb caught by a lobster, but for this analysis, keep your thumb on the violin neck, nice and loose, see that hand, and then first fingers across from it. Now if I change my angle, <clears throat> you can see light, just like the lobster claw, you can see the painting through my hollow thumb. Okay, So I'm not squeezing the neck in any way. I'm not creating tension there. And what you do have to memorize, or memorize, what you do have to remember with the fiddle is that the neck is a separate piece from the body. So essentially a violin is several pieces glued together. It's the most beautiful, creative piece of art created by a puzzle. It's all placed together. This neck is glued onto the body. So the more tension and the more you reef on it, that can, and I have seen it, come off. So be really, really careful with that. Second, you've talked about the straight, relaxed lobster pinch. Now, keep your hand away from the neck. It's another pressure point that will help pull the neck off. Not only that, I don't know if you just saw the angle of my finger. So here's my nice straight wrist. Pull my wrist up. What happened to my fingers? I lost all my placement and I went out of tune. I became flat. So try and keep that wrist nice and straight. Don't do, as my students call it, don't give me a pizza wrist. I don't need you to serve me a pizza. I just want you to play the violin. So keep that wrist nice and straight. Use your lobster pincher. And then here's your third step. As you're placing, I want you to place every single finger. Do it this way. See how well you can see that. I need to move my pinky out of the way. Can you see that? Every single finger, there we go, at a 90 degree angle. I'm coming right down on the pad of my finger. Now this is old classical training, but my nails aren't long enough to interfere with the string. So double check that, and then make sure you can come straight down on the pad of each finger at a 90 degree angle. On the strings, that looks like a tight first finger, second, and third. So none of my fingers are coming off flat. Notice flat fingers go sharp. A tight wrist makes you flat, and a tight thumb pulls you out of place. So focus on what are your fingers doing today. If you use tapes, make sure your placement's right on top of the tape and use the square 90 degree angle fingers, and then listen. So after you finish practicing a few times watching what you're doing, then close your eyes and listen for your intonation. Have a wonderful day.